then start throwing the strikes, let your body loose a little bit. Um, we'll get into striking later, right? Right now I wanna focus on the clinch work to the throw. Now we're gonna look at options from the top. What this fighter, Conejo, did on top, what she did, what she could have done better, all right? And then we're gonna look at some options from the bottom so we can kind of analyze the fight and help us, it helps us improve uh, as jiu-jitsu practitioners to kind of really focus on these options. So let's start from the takedown so we can connect it, right? So once she had control of the arm here, control of the head, she was basically connecting the throw to the scarf hold, right? So we have our scarf hold, Kezakatami is our basic hold. A little bit different in wrestling. In wrestling, they stay nice and low because they're trying to pin, right? So in wrestling, the match would be over. So they're very good about holding this position. In judo, their goal is not to pin. In judo and jiu-jitsu, the goal is to submit. So they do things a little bit differently. So my breakdown of her fight, I would have liked to have seen her do some more judo jiu-jitsu instead of wrestling because what she did is she used this right arm, this right hand to cup the arm, right? So, and she stayed very low and she was able to punch, which is good, it worked for her. But she had a hard time finishing the arm lock. There's a lot of arm locks here. Even if Eric connects his hands, right? I can start to grip the top of the wrist and start pushing down and turn it into a shoulder lock. Oh, you okay? Yeah. You all right? <laughs> That's his old, <laughs> just old, old elbows. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll just tap it, right? <laughs> Sorry, man. Okay. So um, that's yes. <laughs> one option. If I don't get the shoulder lock, I have the hyperextension of the elbow, as y'all heard. <laughs> okay. The wrist lock. Okay. Um, of course, she wanted to go for the traditional th uh, arm lock, what we do the Americana. And a lot of times people mess up because they go over, they get wrap over. If I wrap my ankle right around the wrist, look how easy it is. I'm going to go slow. When you guys do it, go slow. I hip up and push down. Right. If he straightens the arm, I follow it cross my legs, and then hip up to get the hyperextension of the arm bar. We've, we've done these before, okay? Uh, those are some options she could have played with. Of course, easier said than done. Her positioning was, because she's a wrestler, she was really low. In judo, jiu-jitsu, they like to cup the leg and grab the elbow, and now my control is a little bit different. I'm a little bit higher. One thing I could see why she did it was because it avoids the person from inverting to throw the leg over. But having said that, if they do throw the leg over, I can catch and bring it back down and kind of make them pay for, for, for doing that, right? Come back down with, with an elbow. That, those are some options that you guys can work right now too. Another option, cupping this elbow, pushing it through and start working the arm triangle, right? I could bring, bring my shoulder down, connect my hands, especially with MMA gloves, it's hard to feed. But a very good traditional way is to set up my arm triangle here, which we won't do today, but that's one option. Um, another position I like is like jujitsu is more fluid, so I could transition from the scarf hold to a basic side control. And the reason I do that, number one, is this is a very good position, MMA self defense. But if the guy is good at jujitsu, which we're going to talk about escapes right now, then we can really compromise giving our back here. So anytime a person inverts, for example, try to invert, if I pull up at their head, they actually cannot longer invert because their back is off the mat. If his back is on the mat, he can now invert and throw his foot over my head, right? But if he tries to invert and throw the foot over my head, I lift up. Do you see? Now he cannot throw over my head. Another option, transfer this position to side control. Look at what my hand does on this side. I can move you this way. This hand, even if he beats me with the underhook, beat me with the underhook, I can grip the pant, just like we kind of talked about this week, right? And bring my knee over his belly, or my other knee to the hip. Even if he has an underhook, doesn't matter, because I'm in this position, I can bring my hand on this side, my shoulder pressure is keeping them flat. Sometimes I do this, I've shown this before, if I let them get the underhook, come back, boom, I can start trapping, and man, this position for MMA, so great and for jiu-jitsu in general i have the kimura again right i have the arm lock here as well right very tight i have the triangle once i trap i could just pivot and start setting up the triangle from here i also have the gogo -go plata or the or the umo plata right so i could start coming in this way and start throwing 
the omoplata this way or the gogo plata using my foot underneath his chin to get the gogo plata. So the reason I, this position I like for self-defense is because usually the person on bottom doesn't know grappling. In MMA Jiu Jitsu, they usually do. So it's, it's a risk. It's a high risk, high reward type of move, which is why if I'm gonna go for the finishes, I gotta go now, right? Or switch to a basic side control right here. I still have control. I could also trap the bottom arm and then really, really do damage from side control. Another option that we didn't talk about, which I like for a competition, those of you that wanna compete, scarf hold with an underhook. It's safer, I'm not gonna get the hit, I can stay back. If my opponent likes to invert a lot, try to invert, very hard for them because I could pull up and they can't get my back, okay? So we're drilling option one, Two, three, <laughs> like the wrist lock. Okay, four, he straightens out. Five, those are the options. And then for position control, switching to my inside of my leg. The reason I grab the tricep, because it keeps him flat. If I don't grab the tricep, he can get to his side and he can start to get my back. I start coming back here. So some options, if we don't, like number one, work this position, right? Kind of sit up almost like I'm pushing my, um, my the bottom of my lat right on top of his chest. Uh, Kazushi Sakuraba, you all know who he is? He used to do it like this. Really put his elbow into the, into almost into his sternum. Very uncomfortable, could almost crank. Josh Barnett would go here with his catch wrestling, right? The girl this weekend, she cupped this way so she can have an arm free. Um, those are all fine. Some other positions just to look at with an underhook closer to the hip, right? I, he can't invert and I'm safer and I can still throw my punches, all right? And finally, just drill the transition to side control. One, two, three.